Okay, welcome to chapter two. In this chapter we will be talking about functions and equations and we'll start off talking about functions and graphs of functions. So a good place to begin is with this idea of a function. What is a function? And I'll write this. A function is an equation that describes the relationship between two variables. And you can write that in your notes. An equation that d describes the relationship between two variables. There are a lot of cases in which we deal with more than one variable. And when we have more than one variable, they're often related in a very precise mathematical way. And a function tells how they are related. So a function is an equation that describes the relationship between two variables. And I'll give you an example from physics. This example deals with water pressure. And you should be able to make sense of this because you've all been in the water before. And suppose you dive down underneath the water. You know you feel the pressure. And you, you feel it most on your ears because your eardrum is a little membrane. And just like the surface of an actual drum, it can vibrate back and forth. And in order to vibrate back and forth, it has to have air on each side. So on the inside of your eardrum, there's a little air cavity. And when there's increased pressure from diving down, when you dive down, the weight of the water above you squeezes you. And you feel that in particular on your ears because the eardrum can flex inward into the cavity behind it. There's pressure all over your body. You just feel it most on your eardrum. Okay, the point I want to make here is that you feel more pressure the deeper you go. So you can write in your notes, the deeper you dive, the deeper you dive, the greater the pressure. The deeper you dive, the greater the pressure. And that's just a fact about water pressure that you're familiar with. Now there's a precise mathematical relationship that connects the pressure and the depth. And the equation is this. P is equal to 9.8 D. Okay, and this is the correct equation. If P is the pressure, and we're going to measure the pressure in a unit called kilopascals. Pascal, PA, is a unit for pressure. So kilopascals would be thousands of pascals. And D is the depth. That's how, how deep you dive. It's the depth in meters. I'll just put little m for meters. And if you're measuring your pressure in kilopascals and your depth in meters, then this is the equation. You could have other units for pressure. You could have other units for depth, like feet or fathoms. And if you had different units, you would have a different number there. But with these units, that's the, that's the constant 9.8. And P is 9.8 times D. So if you ask the question, this guy right here, how much pressure is he experiencing? Well, the answer is, it depends on how deep he is. So the pressure depends on the depth. And that's an important fact and an important way to state it. You should write that in your notes. P depends on D. And the fact that the value we get for P depends on the number we put in right here for D when we do this calculation. So P depends on, on D. So P is what we call the dependent variable because it depends on the other variable, on the value of the other variable. The value of P depends on the value of D. And then D is what we would call the independent variable. And you can always tell by thinking which one of these variables depends on the value of the other. And in this case, the pressure the guy feels depends on the depth that he is in. So think of this value D as your input. We put a number in for D, or sometimes you hear the word we plug a number in for D, and then we get out a value for P. So think of P as the output. And come down in your notes. With any function, you put in one number and get out another.
And that's a key idea of a function, putting in one number and getting out, getting out another, thinking of an input and an output. Okay, now a function can be graphed. And we'll make a simple graph here to represent this equation. Uh, draw some axes like this, and this one will be P for pressure. And let's put the unit up here, kilopascals. And the horizontal axis here will be D, the depth, and put the unit there in meters. And that's pretty standard practice too, to put what is what we're going to represent on this axis, and there might be some numbers along here, and the unit in which it is measured there in parentheses, and then what we're going to represent here on the other axis, and the unit in parentheses, and we, we could have some numbers there. But this graph is going to go up like this. And the equation, let's write the equation again, P equals 9.8 D, and what you can see is that as D gets larger, P gets larger. That's true for this particular case. As D gets larger, P gets larger. And you can see that both in the equation and on the graph. Clearly, if we put in a bigger number for D, when we do this calculation, we get out a bigger number for P. And we also see that over here. As we go to the right, these would be larger values for D over here to the right. Those larger values for D would correspond to larger values for P further up on the axis there. So P is related to D, pressure is related to depth, and specifically P and D are related by this equation. That tells us mathematically how they are related. So P is related to D. You can also say P depends on D. Pressure depends on depth. The value we get for P depends on the value we put in for D. Or you could say it like this, and this is the way a mathematician would say it. P is a function of D. And what I want you to understand is that saying this, P depends on D, and saying this, P is a function of D, those mean exactly the same thing. This is how a mathematician would say it. We're dealing with functions. This is a mathematical function right here. It relates those two variables and tells us how one depends on another.